everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie and I teach fifth grade in Northern California. In today's video, I'm going to be showing the basics of using Jamboard in your classroom. Now Jamboard is a free Google tool. There are two versions. There's the app version for iOS or Google Play, and there's also the web version. So to be clear, today I'm going over how to use the web version, and it works as a great interactive whiteboard that you can use in your virtual classroom, and also as a virtual collaboration tool that you can use with your students. So starting from your Google homepage, you can open up Jamboard, scroll down, and click the Jamboard app. Now that it opens up, this is where all of your Jamboards will be kept. So to start a new Jam, just scroll to the orange plus sign at the bottom corner and click Add New Jam. Then you'll want to rename the file. So right now, I will double click on the title and I will rename it to Jamboard and click OK. So now this is your whole interactive whiteboard space. It has all of your tools along the side, so we'll start with the pen tool. There are four different brush strokes, the pen, the marker, the highlighter, and the paintbrush. And I'll test those brush strokes out. And you can also change the colors. There are six different colors to choose from. You can use the eraser tool, or you can click clear frame at the top. There's the select tool, and then there's a sticky note feature, which is my favorite because it is the closest thing we have to post-its in the virtual classroom. So you can type a new sticky note, change the color, and it'll be added directly to the Jamboard. I can click and drag, resize, rotate, or I can click the three dots and duplicate. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste as many as you want. Now to add images, you can click the Add Image button, and you have a few options here. You can select a file from your device, do a Google image search, or add an image from the Google Drive or your photos. Now it does need to be an image or a GIF. As of now, you cannot add videos or PDFs to your Jamboard. So one trick I like to do if I want to insert a handout or a Google slide presentation is I can take a screenshot. So right now I took a screenshot of a math worksheet and I can upload that as an image to the Jamboard. So here's a math worksheet that I'll just insert. I can resize it and then I can write directly on it. So that's a really nice feature. Another way to use the Google image search is you can search for an image or if you want a GIF, I just like to add the word GIF after it. And now I can insert that directly onto the Jamboard as well. If you are a Bitmoji fan, you can add the Bitmoji extension and then that's really easy just to open up and click and drag whatever Bitmoji images you want onto your board. So once you have a pretty full Jamboard, you may need to reorder some of those objects so to do that, I will add a sticky note to show you what I mean by that. So once you have a lot of different images on your Jamboard and they'll be on top of each other, you can change the order by clicking these three dots and clicking order and send to back or bring to front and reorder those objects so the one you want is in the front. So the next tool is the shape tool. There's a lot of different shapes to choose from. This is a newer feature and it works great to use for your graphic organizers. So if I wanted to make a Venn diagram, I can insert two circles, change the color. I'll want to make it transparent so that I can actually make it look like a Venn diagram. And then I can easily add sticky notes or add text directly onto that. So you can add a new text box. You can change the size just by dragging the corners to change the size or up at the top you can change where the font would be to a display, a title, or a caption. And then you can also change the font color to one of those six colors. Now right here we have our background so there's a lot of different backgrounds to choose from. I tend to use the line paper to show notes or the graph paper would be good for math, the blue, and then the black as well. Then the last tool is the laser pointer, which is good when doing those live presentations. So if I wanna make a copy of the Jamboard that I've created, I will go to the top and then click the three dots in the corner and click duplicate. Now I can make as many copies as I would like up to 20. So Jamboard allows up to 20 slides. 
into one Jamboard. I then can click and drag to reorder the slides if I want to. Once you're done, you can click the three dots next to the share button to make a copy if you made a template that you want to use in the future. You can also save the frame as an image or download as a PDF. So I want to be able to share this Jamboard with my students and I want them to actually be able to edit it. So you are going to need to change your settings so that your students can actually draw and add sticky notes to this Jamboard. So right now it's private to only me. So I'm going to click share to change the settings and change to anyone with the link or it might say anyone in your district. Right now it says anyone with the link can view the file, but I'm going to change that to editor. So now my students can actually add to the Jamboard. Copy the link, and now it's ready to share with my students. So now I'm going to go into Google Classroom, and there are a couple ways you can do this. The first would be to post it as an announcement. I can attach it as a link, and now my students just have to click that link since I already adjusted the share settings. The other way would be to create an assignment. Create an assignment, you just click add from your Google Drive, find the Jamboard, it will be one of your most recent files since you just worked on it, and click insert. Now change it to students can edit file so that they can actually edit directly on it once they've opened it up. And then assign it to them. So those are two different ways you can share it with your students on Google Classroom. To share the link with your students, it doesn't have to be through Google Classroom. You could just send it to them if you've edited those share settings as well. Now something to keep in mind when using Jamboard with your students is if you are using a Jamboard for your whole class to collaborate, there is no revision history, which means things can easily get deleted and you won't really know what caused that or who caused that. So the only way you can tell is when students are on the Jamboard, you can see a very small icon of their profile picture, which is why I do recommend using Jamboard when you are able to supervise maybe during breakout rooms or as a whole class during a live session. So that is something you'll want to be aware of when introducing Jamboard with your class is that once things are deleted, it's really hard to get them back. So be sure to set those expectations with them. So I hope you found this video helpful and feel a little more comfortable starting to use Jamboard in your classroom. I do have a video that goes over some ways that you can actually use it in your virtual classroom, so be sure to check that one out. I'll leave the link down in the description below. If you do have any other questions about using Jamboard, make sure you drop them down in the comments. If you did find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone!